So, in a later video, not not in this one, because I don't want to make this video too long. In a later video today, I'm going to read to you scriptures. Um, and on the topic of lukewarm spirituality. Now, before I get into that, we first have to start somewhere. The introduction in terms of understanding the foundation. Right? I don't know where you're at. I don't know who I'm ministering to, but I'm going to be led by the Holy Spirit in order to help people navigate through their life, their worldly life, their earthly life right here. Now, I'm going to try to take my mind back all the way to the beginning of when I was either first beginning or I had all these questions. I have all this understanding now because of a lot of ruts and pits that I fell into. That's the first thing I want to say. Pits and ruts, they teach you something. Anytime you bump your head, you learn a lesson. Now, of course, sometimes the lesson is not like, oh, I learned my lesson. I'm going to do an about face and walk in, in the opposite direction. Sometimes it's not that easy. But nevertheless, God uses your bad decisions to teach you that that's not going to get you anywhere in this life. So the first th the first lesson is for people to have an understanding. The Bible in the book of Proverbs says, in all you're getting, get understanding. Um, in the book of Proverbs, it will teach you how to live. It will teach you like, uh, it will teach you how, how to uh, navigate through life, right? The do's and the don'ts. I highly suggest you read the book of Proverbs because it will help you to make wiser decisions to and, and, and kind of like it teaches you about who to watch out for, what type of characters there, there is out there, who not to be. And the reason why who not to be is because they reap curses. Like there's reasons why um, God says stay away from drugs and stuff like that. It's not to... It's not so that you won't take pleasure. He'll say, stay away from bad company. It's not so that you, to keep something from you. That's the devil's spin and perversion on God trying to help you out. Any good parent out there will tell their, their children to stay away from danger. Now, you've heard of the saying, curiosity kills the cat. Well, the people's... The people's like curiosity will go and venture out and say, why shouldn't I stick a fork in a light socket? Well, why shouldn't I? And it's that when they do it, they get zapped. They're like, dude, stupid idea. I don't want to do that again. Or you tell a person, a, a child, don't put your, your hand on the oven. It's hot. It's like, I see it glowing red, but I just got it. I got to try it. And so then... You go through these life lessons, and I'm, I'm using like stupid little examples, but you go through enough of these t things that start teaching you about life. And so anytime you fall into a pit or a rut, it could be financial, it can be with relationships, sooner or later, sooner or later, so mostly later. <laughs> it's not, usually it's not sooner, mostly later, years later. They capture the revelation that I don't want to be with people like this. They suck up all my energy. They use me. They don't care about me. It's not worth my time. They take away my peace. All my money gets lost. You know, I don't want to do, I want to preserve my, and so people start putting boundaries, a fence around the things that they care about. Now, mostly people lock their doors at night because they want to preserve and protect their own family and their possessions. But people don't do that with their heart, and they should. People don't do that with their soul, and they should. People don't do that with their mind, and they should. In the book of Proverbs, it, it says that a fool vents all his feelings, but a wise person holds them back. And I thought that that was interesting because it's like you're not supposed to just tell the wrong people all kinds of information because you can be telling an undercover enemy all of your uh and they hold it against you and we've all been there and done that we've all seen what that's like when you tell somebody a weakness of yours they take that piece of information they share it with the world and then it comes back to you and you're like dude i told that person in confidence right 
And so you go through the enough of this to keep your mouth shut when you're around a new person now. Now you just met new people, but you went through that experience and now you're a little bit more sculpted in what God said in the Bible to be and to do. See, the Bible refers to God as the potter and we are the clay. God is trying to sculpt us into a, a, like a person that stays away from fires, you know, that doesn't create fires, but stays away from fires. Um, and so what I mean by that is like, I don't involve myself with drama, but when I was younger, that's all I did day and night. And I was always involved with gang activity, drugs, guns, doing wrong, stealing, fighting, all that stuff was my daily thing. And in the beginning, you go through it and you're going through the motions. And how the devil keeps you there is he sells you the idea that you're building up to something. You're working up to something. Or should I say working down to something. And so reputation, image, respect on the streets is usually the, the, the ingredients of what the devil uses as a, a, a fish line and hook with the bait of do my will. See, Satan wants everybody to do his will, which is to steal, kill, and destroy. And so when you're going out and you're doing evil to other people, you're ruining people's lives, you're getting them a fall, you're getting them a stumble, you're, you know, I, I, have you ever seen somebody that's innocent and you can tell that they're innocent. You can tell that, you know, they don't know too much about life. They're growing up. Have you ever seen somebody that's not innocent take that person that is innocent and put their arm around them and befriend them and get them into all kinds of <coughs> foolish behavior? I've seen it. And it's like... It's what God wants us to do to get people out of behavior, but it's backwards. Satan will disciple people to get them to go deeper and deeper in darkness, in the layers of darkness, and getting them to do evil and destroy one another. Because they get destroyed, but then they destroy. There's people out there that they look at going to prison as going to university. Like, understand that the warpness that is going on there, it's a training camp. It is a mindset. It's like the more trouble you get into, the worse things get for you, the better it is. But you know what the Bible says about that? It says, woe to those that call good evil and evil good. Because good is not evil and evil is not good. And the Bible says a good tree can't bear bad fruit and a bad tree can't bear good fruit. And so the Bible says that even like even when the wicked are being good um, to their animals, they're, you know, it's like, and I used to do this, but now reading the Bible, I see myself of who I used to be in the Bible and who I am now. Like the Bible says like, when the wicked are like playing around and trying to show love, even that is in a in a brutal type of way. Like I used to rough house with my dogs, grab its cheeks and move it around and smack it on top of the forehead and slap it around. And that was my way of showing the dog love. <laughs> that was my way of showing the dog love. I like that was I was me playing with the dog. And and now I see it. Now I have eyes to see. Now I have understanding. But back then I was genuine. I was genuinely lost and blind. Genuinely. And so if you would have told me, man, you're being mean to the dog, I would have looked at you like, oh, I'm not, man. I'm playing with him. You know? I'm trying to toughen him up and this and that. Whatever. Just using some practical examples to, to show the... the the things that the Bible is trying to reveal to us. And so back to God being the potter. He is the potter and we are the clay. And God's trying to mold us. And a lot of the time, 
God just wants you to follow him. Okay? But because people are rebellious and they're stubborn and they don't trust God and they don't they they think that their ba their way is better than God's way because of all of that, they go on in their own direction. And what they face out there is basically what the devil has laid out for them. So a lot of traps and snares and bondage and curses and all kinds of stuff. That's why people are in and out of bad relationships and they can't catch a break. Let me do a pit stop there real quick. When you are... Okay. Let me see. You will... Mag, let me put it like this. You will attract whatever level... Uh of energy you're putting out there so like when i was a drug addict and when i was a gangster and all that when i would go into locations I, I it's almost like i had a magnet on me and all these bad people would come to me and i didn't know them but we would carry conversations and we would carry this energy like if we've known each other our whole life like yo can i can i get a cigarette you know um and then from there, it was just like, now we're sharing drugs, we're sharing alcohol, we're, we're laughing, and, and, and the whole thing. And for me, it was just like, everywhere I would go, I would find myself involved with these types of people. It didn't matter where I went. Likewise, when you are attracting different people, like, like say a, a woman in a relationship, if she has the mindset of value for herself that she 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 doesn't value herself and she will attract the guys that treat her bad right it's this mindset that god tells us in the bible to renew our mind and we will be transformed by renewing our mind a lot of this of what i'm talking about uh, your life can change just by renewing your mind by telling yourself that you're not who the devil says that you are the devil will insinuate that you are this and that. We're dealing in, 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 a, in, a, in an epidemic right now of uh, is a crisis of identity. And people don't know what they are. Some, some people are more lost than other people. And they consider themselves they and them. And it's like, that is spiritual. The fact that you think that you are more than one person is spiritual. That means that you have more personalities in you than your own. And you don't know how to decipher your personality from others' personalities. And I used to be one of those people. I had demons. When the, the demons got casted out of me, I found myself liberated and in my right mind. Now, I had to renew my mind because my mind was in the gutter. My mind wanted to do the things of darkness. And anytime I would be around somebody that was positive and somebody that represented the light, I would feel insecure. Why? Because all I knew was negative. All I knew was the bottom of the barrel kind of stuff. That was my language. That was my frequency. That was what I was putting out there. And that's what I would attract in return. The people that are positive and they're of the light, they don't want to hang around with people in the darkness unless they're evangelizing them. But they don't want to be brought down. They want to lift people up and they want to go higher than what, where they're at right now. And that's what God is all about. Is that God is all about going up. And the devil is all about going down. And you'll know them by their fruit. Your actions will reflect whether you're going up or down. Whatever you practice on a habitual daily... Uh, uh, every day, whatever you practice, it's either going to take you up or down. Right, And so you're either getting better or you're getting worse. And the Bible says that when sin is fully uh, mature, it leads to death. So have you ever noticed, and, I, and this happened to me, have you ever noticed that people that are positive and they live in the light and they're doing good to other people, how they look young? They have the appearance of somebody that's young, even if they're old. Even if they're 60, they look young. But likewise, you can have somebody that's in their 20s, teens, 20s, 30s, and they're just committing a lot of habitual 
negative practices. A lot of negative practices daily. And they have the appearance of being old. And it, it, that, that is uh, like the spiritual implications behind the scenes is that sin will make you old and gray and dead. Before you ever even reach that age, it'll get you there. Because you're practicing the wrong deeds. And sin equals death. death. That's what the Bible says. And so death looks old and gray. And that's how people look when they are practicing sin. And so what does God want? Just to tell you, like, stop doing that to yourself. Have you ever seen somebody sabotaging themselves and, and creating hell for themselves? And you're like, man, just knock it off. Stop that. Well, sometimes it's a demon. Sometimes it's a... Um, it's witchcraft and sometimes it's like they can't stop it's a self-sabotaging spirit and you need deliverance and i just i'm just here telling you that it exists that you need to go to a place where you can find deliverance in a church right There's different churches out there some churches are religious and traditional and other churches move in the spirit of god where they will prophesy to you and the holy spirit will come up to you and call you out of your seat and say hey it's your time to be free and change will be broken and deliverance will take place and you will be a new creation and then god will give you a new heart new desires be transformed all of that exists it depends which church you go to some churches move in the supernatural and some churches move you know uh just it's a dead church there's nothing going on and uh and a lot of people are going to dead churches and they're judging everything by that dead church that they went to there's churches out there that are are not churches at all but satan is is running that pastor and that pastor is in sin himself and he is nothing he's he's not a man of god and but he has the building that represents a cross and this and that and people fall for it and they go into that building looking for help and they find themselves among wolves in sheep clothing and the Bible says be careful. So the best thing you could do is submit and yield and surrender your life to God. Every day, moment by moment. And he will start to turn the wheel on your life and get you to go in the right direction. He'll send you people. He'll send you videos like these. And you'll find yourself heading in the right direction. Because if I start... To get into the Bible and start reading a bunch of verses about uh, lukewarmness and this and that. If you are beginning, like, if you haven't even been saved, then a message like that will turn you off. You, It will be Chinese to you. You won't even understand it. And that's literally what the Bible says. Because the Bible says that Satan comes and blinds the eyes of the unbelievers so that they won't understand the things of God. There is a realm out there that exists of, that, that has everything to do with peace and freedom and light and security. And that's where God is trying to take you. And Satan is the great deceiver. He'll tell you, don't go over there. It's boring over there. It's religion. It, 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 they, they, you know, they, they don't care about you. They're pedophiles. All, all these different things that people say about you know God and churches and stuff like that. Like People come up with all kinds of stuff, right? But the fact is, is that there's real freedom. There's real power and there's transforming power. And that's why my my username here is proof. And the reason why proof is because God told me a long time ago in, my, in the beginning of when I got saved, he said, you're proof that I am alive. Because you guys don't know how bad I want I was. You 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 have an idea because I told you my testimony, but I kid you not, I was a hundred times worse than what you think I was. And not just worse in behavior, because that was really bad, but then also worse in condition. I was I was as bad as you 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 can get. I was Baker acted uh, on every medicine on the market to try to get uh, the voices out of my head and anxiety out of my life. I was seeing psychotherapists and therapists and rehabs and getting kicked out for fighting and. I was a nutcase. I was a lost case. I was deemed by society as a lost case. Have you ever met a lost case before? 
a lost case is like we tried we tried we gave you everything to try to help you out we couldn't help you out you are a lost case and talking to myself and all of that stuff man because drugs will do all that to you you know drugs produces mental illness but god redeems and that's why I make videos is to show people out there that are hurting and in similar situations I can relate to you and I, I just want you to know that I've been walking with God for 12 years now and I'm a family man I got peace I got everything I've ever wanted in my life and I don't say that to boast I just say that because I'm boasting about God he, he has done everything, everything that I've ever wanted him to do in my life. I don't lack anything. I don't lack any good thing. I can't think of a single thing that I want that, that I don't have. All glory to God. What did I do to get myself here? I surrendered. I gave up. You see, I hit the wall so many times in a row. I tried it my way so much. I was as rebellious as, I, as they came. I was as stubborn as they came. I ran as far as I could in the opposite direction. And when I finally understood that I'm in hell, outer darkness, I'm in dungeons of hell, I am getting tormented by demons on a daily basis. I have mental illness. I have destroyed my life in more ways than 10 ways more ways I have destroyed it annihilated it and so it's like what now what do you do now you've done it to yourself what do you do now I surrendered my life to Jesus because it was suicide or it was Jesus and I decided let me give Jesus a try but I was trying to commit suicide because I thought that there is no way I can get up out of the, the hole that I dug myself in a lot of people out there feel that way. They feel, I am too lost. Not even God can save me. That is a lie. I was very far gone. And God saved me. And I just want to give Him glory in this video. But I also want to let you know that if you surrender, if you, like, what did I do? I went to celebrate recovery. It, uh, it's like an AANA meeting. Uh, I did the NA and I did the AA uh, before I did Celebrate Recovery. So I try to help myself in the practical way. I went to rehabs and all of that. I'm not against um, medicine. <coughs> in the beginning, you may need all of that just to get, get, get yourself uh, a leg up because I understand how hard it is. So... But can I say this? It's very true what I'm about to say. It's all spiritual behind the scenes. Everything. All your symptoms. All your... Everything that you're going through. Everything. Like your voices. The torment. The, the restlessness. The, the feeling dirty on the inside. The unworthiness. The value system. The insecurities. The fear. The suicidal thoughts. The depression. All of that is spiritual. And if you... Go to the light and start spending time in the light. You'll be uncomfortable. But the more you return and you fight the forces of darkness by putting yourself in the light, the light will start to break through the, the darkness. And the more you put yourself and you remain in the light, there will come a point in time where the light has engulfed all the darkness in your life. But in order to do that, you're going to have to become uncomfortable. Because the darkness doesn't like the light. So what do they want you to do? They want to isolate you. So that you can be alone. In your room. Away from everybody. And having depressive suicidal thoughts. And medicating yourself. That's what That was me for years and years and years. And. You know. It's like. I had to decide. Because God. He was ready and willing and able to help me, but I had to decide. And the devil kept telling me lies. He kept trying to get in my way of making the right decision. You know, the devil is uh, a person that, that, would, that would tell somebody else, call him. You know, and all of a sudden, you're, you're thinking about going to church and then somebody's thinking, 
hey, why don't you come with me to go drink and, and, and smoke and do this and that? And you're like, what the heck? Like, I'm trying to change my life, and now all of a sudden, the greediest person in the world wants to spark me up. Like, this person never wants to spark me up. This person never wants to, you know, uh, be be that type of guy, right? To, to just say, hey, he's a free bag. But now he does, all of a sudden. It's all spiritual, and it happens. And, and let me say something else. The devil doesn't have anything new under the sky. Like, everything that he's done with me, he's doing it with you. And he, he did it with your relatives before you. He doesn't have anything new. Like, once you get to know the game plan, that's why the Bible says, and all you're getting, get understanding. Once you get to know the game plan, you fight against the game plan. You have to rebel. You know, a lot of us are masters at rebelling. We have to rebel against Satan and darkness and the ways of this world. Right? If you're going to rebel, become a, a master rebe rebel. And that's what Jesus was. Jesus came and he wasn't traditional. He wasn't saying what everybody else was saying. He started to acquire a lot of people's attention. Because Jesus was was saying some stuff that, that, that ruffled the feathers of other people. And saying, man, well, why are you saying that? Why are you saying that? Like, it made people uncomfortable. But Jesus is like, I didn't come to fit into your program. I came to revolutionize everything, like flip over tables and and and, and call people out. And, and he said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. If you want to follow me, then you're going to have to prove it because it's not going to be easy. People are going to be against you. Because Satan has agents and he'll create obstacles for you so that it can make it harder for you to get to God but salvation is well worth it heaven is well worth it and the peace and everything that God gives you and treasure and all of that is well worth it but Satan fights fights so that you won't get there and uh, it's, it's gonna have it's gonna take you getting very very serious and making sin your enemy Satan your enemy a lot of people are holding the hands of the devil and they're holding the hands of sin and they made friends with it they made friends with their demons and I was there myself I've been there and I've done that because they are the great deceivers that's what the Bible says he is the great deceiver so he tries to kill you and he tries to befriend you at the same time like that's his game he puts his hand around your shoulder and he's leading you towards destruction at the same time he tells you what what you shouldn't do that's going to get you into trouble and then he condemns you for doing it and once you start getting upset and angry and you start getting a revelation he switches up and he tries to be your friend he walks on all the streets so until I got fed up, because I had been in the system such a long time of being deceived, and I've seen all the different hats that he wears and all the different faces that he puts. And once I saw all the different personalities that he tries to hit you with, I said, no. Even when you come at me as an angel of light, I, I, I peep it. I'm like, oh, that's the angel of light. That is the devil. Just as much as the devil with horns is the devil. He comes in different fa forms. And you have to peep it when it's happening. He'll use people to try to lead you astray. And you have to peep it. But the only way to peep it is to be connected to God. The more connected to God you are, the more discernment, the more eyes you have. And the more God will have of your attention when he says... When he convicts you and all this, you'll care. You'll care because you want to remain with God. Because you understand everything that comes from the devil, it comes with this. Uh, he wants to permeate you with, like, venom. And, and it, it rushes through your whole life and it just takes over. Like, your, your mind, your eyes, your, your perception... The way you walk, 
everything is looking down on the floor like shame guilt and condemnation and it's like you gotta decide I don't wanna play this game no more I'm, I'm not gonna put myself in a position where the devil has any leverage over me that's why the bible says don't give the devil a loophole or a foothold to work with you know alright 30 minutes in let's end this video but I don't know who my audience is. So sometimes I have to, sometimes I preach a more mature message and sometimes it's something as basic as what I'm preaching here because there's messages, depending on where you're at, that's gonna make sense to you. And if you hear me make a message that is more mature and that's not where you're at, understand that God has a lot of grace with you and that you're not there yet, okay? So if you ever hear a message and I'm starting to preach to, to uh, mature Christians and I'm rebuking them for their lifestyle because they should know better by now. Uh, if you hear something like that, don't take it to the heart because God deals with different people according to where they're at, right? So somebody that's starting off is not going to get dealt with. Like the Bible says, the teachers will be held to a higher standard. The only reason that they're held to a higher standard is because when you have a revelation, when you know more, you ought to do better. Because according to your knowledge and wisdom and understanding of who God is and what you're dealing with and how much you know, that's what you'll be held accountable for. Because if you know, you know. So let's leave it there. God bless.